Okay, welcome to episode 33, where I'm going to finally make use of the name for this channel, where I'm going to put that burner radio on this Kid Fox 5. I just spent an entire month in Alaska, and now I'm going to get a month off. So a short one week where I'm going to go to Cabo with my favorite woman ever. I'm all about the build. When I left off in the last episode, I had done a piece of this edge trim right down here uh, where the two pieces of fabric overlap and I wasn't really happy with the way it came out. I thought maybe if I leave it and come back, maybe it'll look okay or maybe I'll decide what to do. There's no way. So I used a heat gun. I got off that piece of tape and redid this entire section. And with the fabric complete enough that I could put the landing gear back on, I mounted the T3 tail wheel, which I'll show you in a minute, and started putting on the main landing gear. The main landing gear took a lot longer than before because previously I was just mocking it up with uh, whatever hardware I had laying around, but in this case, this is uh, beyond dress rehearsal. I'm hoping to leave it on here now. So I had to make sure that all the bolt lengths were perfect. Uh, some of them are castellated nuts with a cotter pin, so they have to be uh, spaced just right. So I had to make some adjustments to bolt lengths, washers, get some thin washers, and all that. So I placed an order with Spencer Aircraft, which happens to be uh, takes way too long to drive over there but it's uh, in our county and I was able to order all the hardware I needed last night and go over and pick it up today. Anyway, we had lots to do. Thanks for coming along. Let's get started. So when I was doing the other episode, I was using this two inch tape and I had made some comment about using a piece of three inch tape going forward from here. The two inch tape, the problem was I cut it very closely around these fittings. And the problem was that, you know, with a regular piece of fabric, you're pulling and stretching and you trim off the excess. But the whole point of finish tape is that you don't do that. Well, I had to pull and stretch to get it all to lay down here. And I was looking at it from this perspective and it was actually pretty straight here. But on this side, which is what you'd see all the time, it looked terrible. So thankfully, it's quite easy to get this tape off with just enough heat to reactivate the adhesive, pull it off. I cleaned up the adhesive that was on there. And then I did use a piece of three inch. I cut it much more generously around these fittings and I did overlap those pieces of tape that I talked about a long time ago. And where the one viewer had told me that the factory doesn't require us, I want to say recommend, um, they're not required to put these other tapes on the bottom. Uh, he's right, it's also in Lars' manual, so a little RTFM would have saved me some trouble in this case. Again, no regrets, because it takes a little bit of skill, practice, whatever, to get used to using this stuff and make it lay down. Also, this is going to be the most abused and neglected section of this airplane when I'm done. So, here's what it is. What I am quite sure is required is the edge tapes where the two pieces of fabric overlap. Uh, there's another point here. So again, the people that have watched a few episodes may recall that this is the steel fitting where the main landing gear goes, and there was a gap between here and this piece of trim. And I filled mine with balsa, high sol, and some super fill to make it smooth. And I ignored this piece right here. Well, I wish I had made some kind of a transition that made this easier to pull off. Because when I tried to do it in one piece of tape, I ended up with a big air bubble underneath here. And that was a no-go. So in this case, I did the three inch to here. And then I went back to the two inch for these, this piece and trimmed it so that there was uh, not a wrinkle, but an overlap where I trimmed it. And then it was underneath this main gear fitting done deal. And yes, I have noticed that the powder coating is a completely different red. Can't win them all. Uh, this stuff right here is actually some of the rattle can paint I used a long time ago uh, that was supposed to be color matched. I had some that was perfect, like that stuff down there, and some that was not so much. But again, this is all going to be underneath the boot cowl. No one cares. And as I mentioned, I went through today. The, there are some of the fasteners where they don't pivot, so you use a self-locking fastener and then some of them where they do pivot like the cabane strut right here and up here and here so i did all those stack up so everything worked out perfect got all the cutter keys in place pretty happy with myself until i noticed and i got this one they're just symmetrical i got it with the bolt head facing aft which is not something we do and this is under compression right now so if i pop this nut out it'd probably be quite a struggle to get it back in. So I'm actually just gonna sacrifice the two cotter keys, this one and this one, 
flip this strut over, put it back together, and I'll be good to go. Now I'm gonna convince one of my hangar neighbors to help me flip this thing over and get it back under skier because that's coming up. And one of the toys that showed up in my absence was the T3 tail wheel from Alaska Bush Wheels. This is gonna flatten my deck angle slightly, which is gonna help if I understood the folks at Stick and Rudder correctly. If you put too much angle of attack on one of these airplanes, which I'm gonna have because I put on the tall landing gear, fat tires to get prop clearance. Uh, you're too close to stall, so ends up eating a little bit of runway. Plus, eh, all the cool kids are doing it. Uh, word to the wise, if you're building a Kit Fox 5, not a 7, the dash, I don't remember what I did here, I think they were dash 10, a and three bolts in here had to be replaced with some dash sevens or eights otherwise i would have stripped them out but this was pretty amusing to get this all back together uh, it's going to be fine this uh 3200 tail wheel i already owned and it was on the aluminum spring which is perfectly fine uh, now surplus to my needs all right and where i typically like to show the stuff i just received of course i just showed you the t3 tail wheel my engine importer, Brett Hahn, talked me into ordering a Sensenich ground adjustable prop. This is a hollow carbon fiber blade. These blades are heavier than the Megalin prop I have, which may be similar or identical to the NR Luga, what's the other name, cool props. But I'm not certain about that, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, that prop is spectacular workmanship, super lightweight. Uh, this, even though the blades are heavier, there's only two blades in this case instead of three. Brett worked with the Sensenich engineers to pick this blade length, the blade type, the hub I'm going to use, which is just an SAE-1 similar to a 0235 Lycoming and a bunch of other engines anyway. So this prop was not super expensive considering it's American made and it's not for a certified aircraft, so that's good. Anyway, this is the ones that use the pin to adjust the pitch and I have read some caution that you should still use a protractor. Uh, because the blades could vary by one degree or whatever anyway, so the Sensenich engineers are quite sure that I would be really happy with this prop. The whole cool thing about experimental aircraft is you get to do stuff like this without STC paperwork and all that. So I'll get to hub out later on, actually once I hang the engine, because I'm going to pull this thing out there, put the wings on, mount the butt ribs. I would need to start a list of my whiteboard of projects that are coming up. I've got quite a few. Let's see how many we can get done. And for the people who appreciate the 30 Seconds at Alaska segment, fear not, since I spent 30 days there, I got a lot more than 30 seconds of footage. some spectacular it was super cold I'm just gonna say that it was uh, minus 30 for some of it minus 3 C and super windy enough to bend the pole that the windsock is on it does cause some operational problems including a Piper Lance that I was flying that had a gear extension issue um, ended up with a gear collapse it was a NTSB incident because it was shockingly little damage to the aircraft when it was done it needed a flap flap track and the wingtip was scuffed up no prop strike and the bottom of, of the surface of the wing blue or not even though it looks like it in the pictures didn't touch the ground at all and just like that it's right set up Okay, well the engine is on temporarily. I had to improvise because the engine hoist I have wouldn't lift the engine high enough to get it on the firewall with the tires on. So I pulled the wheels off real quick and in the process pulled the inside bearings out. So I have to put those back in. That's why I'm gloved up right now. Other than that, I have the four bolts. They all fit in there. Uh, looking pretty good. Hoist is off. Um, the hoist, besides not quite having the capacity to lift it high enough, also tends to bleed out pressure 
in uh, just a few minutes. It edges inches down, so I would never leave an engine hanging from that thing. Have to mark and drill the bottom location. The um, bolt lengths I chose and the washer turned out to be a perfect fit, so pretty happy with that. You know, I'm gonna get the wheels back on it and wheel it outside for some more pictures. Okay, well, I keep doing a lot of this with the camera turned off, but I got the wheels back on. Of course, busy with hangar neighbors who are as stoked as I am to see this thing up and running. So right now I'm putting the exhaust system back on. If you watched the episode before, this has two stacks and they do not point straight down. They're gonna point off to the right side of the aircraft a little bit. Reason being, I have that oil tank, which is gonna be shifted off to the left side where it'll be easy to reach the filler and the dipstick. The uh, prop hubs I have, both of them, are kind of tight because it's cold and Brett told me I should warm them up, cause them to expand a little bit. They'll probably slip right on, so have those in front of my infrared heater. So I'm just gonna let the camera run for a little while while I'm putting on the rest of the exhaust system. I'll have to edit out the cussing and swearing that takes place. It's a little bit of uh, finesse and making all the connections work, but that's how it goes. It's really not that big a deal. And it's very easily reachable in the place it's in right now. I was kind of worried that once I got it up here, it'd be harder to reach than it was face down in the crate. If anything, this is a little bit easier. All right, my GoPro battery died a little while ago, so I'm switching to the phone. Mounted the exhaust system on and the Sensinich carbon prop. Uh, both hubs will fit at this point anyway, so you see my two stacks, so they're a little bit asymmetrical. We'll point out that side. Now the fun begins. I get to figure out where I'm going to mount the coil packs. Uh, there's two sticks. I'll get those out in a little bit. Uh, this is loose right now, so don't let that bother you. And the oil tank, fuel pumps, and that's about it. There's no ECU for this airplane, no radiator. Oil cooler is, in fact, optional, but I need to make a concession for that in case that happens. This is the carbon fiber boot cowl and the firewall for a Rotax 912 ULS. What I get to invent is the, called an accessory cowl that goes from here to here. And whether I'm gonna make it out of fiberglass or carbon or sheet metal, uh, still to be determined. At any rate, there will be a air filter here and a scoop on the side of the accessory cowl. Now I gotta put a cowl over the engine itself, probably not for at least two years. Uh, my hanger neighbor over there with the Cessna 195 insists that I should get a bump cowl of some kind, but I'm going to leave it hanging out in the breeze for a while. First of all, it's easier to do the cooling because you put a cowl on it, you have to put the baffles in between and all that crap. And So especially for the first many, many hours that I run this thing, I'd like to be able to inspect it, look for oil leaks, any kind of problems servicing it. In case I haven't pointed it out before, oil filters on the front, super easy to reach. This prop is just faked in right now. Um, just barely clamped, I need to double check a few things. I did use the uh, set pins, it says to use pin number four. You just put the prop blades towards coarse pitch, jam the pin in, rotate them towards fine pitch. They click, you can see one of the pins right there. And the other one, maybe, maybe not. Anyway, nice prop. We've had my tools packed up a couple times, ready to go home. And I Wanted to play with this stuff. So this is one of the coil packs. You can see it's labeled one through seven for each of the different cylinders. And then of course there's two of these coil packs. I just used some Adele clamps and some uh, number three fasteners. This one's rock solid. Each of the coils points forward. And then this is the harness, which has a Y splitter going from this uh, Hall effect sensor ring. I think that's what it is. This is the other set of coils. And this one is Mounted differently because I'm trying to keep them pointed forward. So this one, this pigtail comes out at the top. The other one comes out at the bottom. Uh, there's a whole bunch of holes, obviously, in the base plate of this thing that I can tap into. I could use a second one. I need to I think get a hold of one of these, which is threaded up here. Probably can't see it. Maybe can. And then put another Adele clamp up here. And then this one would also be rock solid. I have to make sure there's airflow over this, so I've either got to come up with some way to get airflow through the whole cowl, something. Anyway, this is just me spitballing it for today. I also looked at some positions mounting them on the firewall itself, solid to it. Figure I'm going to send some pictures to Brett, see what he thinks before I move on. I did take a couple still shots of the oil tank in place. And then, of course, per my CAD design, I did quite a while ago, the oil tank's going to go here. 
little bit off center that puts that dipstick and filler tube by the left side of the fuselage where it'll be easy to reach. Uh, this is obviously not the exact location it's gonna go and I have to work out the bracketry and the routing of all the lines. And of course I gotta get out my fuel pumps which I think will probably mount here because the fuel lines will come out in here somewhere. Could go right to the pumps, right to the inlet on the throttle body and keep that pretty short. Throttle linkage, so this is the throttle. And underneath down here is the mixture. This one to operate correctly, it's at idle. Push to open to full throttle, it'll be correct. So really just some kind of a straight shot out of the firewall to a ball joint that's on the top of here. Some kind of a spacer probably to keep it so that there's no interference. Actually, it looks like it'd be fine. And uh, yes, it's loose because I only have a couple bolts in, but anyway, so that looks pretty straightforward. Mixture, I gotta think about it. Again, fuel pump, all that crap. Uh, the most complicated is gonna be mounting that oil tank because I'll probably have to have some tabs welded onto it. And uh, I'm not a welder at all, but I know that's thin aluminum. It is 5052, which is probably the easiest stuff to weld on. Uh, but I'd need some tabs and then some kind of a spacer with a rubber isolator mount on the firewall. And then something hanging from above, and sorry again for the autofocus on the phone, uh, for the forward edge. Anyway, I think I exhausted my supply of the Dell clamps for half-inch tubes. I'm going to have to go order some more of those. Got lots of AN hardware. That's not the problem. I'll have to adjust the lengths and everything. I just torqued them down to see if they were rigid, and this one is actually super solid. It's that uh, other one that could use a fourth clamp or one relocated. Uh, we'll see. And I honestly got further than I thought I was going to already. Got some people would like to see me start this engine and run it. And getting the coils on and getting the fuel injection figured out kind of gets me there, but uh, a little bit short. Still need to come up with a oil pressure gauge, a mechanical one. I would need to properly torque the prop, which it's not. It's just faked in. Big old long list. Probably not worth it, but I do want to hear this thing run pretty soon. Anyway, because there are engineering challenges, which I have to work out and got to think about, I'm probably going to cut this episode off here and then do another episode that's going to release this month because I'm home. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on episode 34.